Hello friends and welcome to Techie Jack. In this video we are going to discuss about the transport rule in Exchange Server 2016. So basically if you talk about transport rule, uh, transport rule evaluates your message as Exchange Server processes them. And if the conditions for a, a particular message uh, in a transport rule is met by a message, an action is performed on that message and you can use transport rule to control message flow or even uh, modify a message content. If you talk about the data loss prevention policies, it also uses the transport rule and definition of sensitive information types to identify the messages with important information and prevent those messages from leaving your organization. So let's have a look on what are transport rules. As I said earlier, like transport rule restrict message flow or modify message content when messages are in transit. Transport rule can be applied to a message as they pass through the edge transport server or a mailbox server. And if you talk about on a mailbox server, the transport service applies the rule. So let's see what we can do with the transport rules. You can prevent a specific user from sending or receiving email from other specific user and you can prevent inappropriate content from entering or leaving your organization. It also apply a restriction based on message classification to restrict the message of confidential organization information. And of course you can track or journal message that specific individual send or receive. That means you can journal that message and that message will be sent to a journal inbox and every time the user send or receive the email uh, you can have a look or you can have monitoring on that email. You can redirect incoming and outgoing message for inspection before the delivery. So uh, even you can apply the disclaimers to message as they pass through the organization. And finally, uh, you can also apply the Active Directory Write Management Services template to the message based on message criteria. Let's see how transport rule works. So any transport rule you create are applied automatically by all server running Exchange Server 2016 in your organization. And if you talk about that where they are stored, the transport rule are stored in Active Directory Domain Services so that uh, each and every Exchange Server have access to them and if your organization is using like uh, multiple server in a different active directory sites so when you create a new transport rule there can be a short propagation delay until your active directory site replication has been completed and you are guaranteed that transport rules are applied to every messages because all messages are processed by the transport service all messages in Exchange Server 2016 must be processed by the transport service even if the messages are between two mailboxes in the same mailbox database. The transport service applies the transport rules on them. Like if you want to apply more than one transport rule, it can be applied to a single message. And the transport rule are listed in a priority order to control the order of the application. Uh, however, if a rule applies to a message, lower priority can still apply. For example, like one transport rule could add a disclaimer and a second transport rule could apply a message moderation. So let's have a look on a configuring the transport rules. Transport rules are composed of three things like condition, action and exceptions. And the combination of these parts defines what message are selected for processing and what is done to those messages. If you talk about the condition like specify it specify which message attributes are used to identify the message to act upon. It indicates like which email message attributes like headers, recipients, sender or other message part Exchange Server uses to identify the email message to which it applies the transport rule action. If the email messages matches the condition value, the Exchange Server apply the rule as long as the condition does not match an exception because if it matches the exception, the rule will not apply. And you can configure multiple transport rule condition to narrow the uh, rule scope to very specify criteria. You can also decide not to apply any condition which means that uh, the transport rule then applies to all messages. And there is no limit to the number of condition that you can apply to a single transport rule. And there one thing to note is there if you configure a multiple condition on the same transport rule 
all of the condition must be met for the transport rule to apply a particular uh, email message and when you specify a multiple value on a single condition the condition is satisfied if at least uh, one of the value is met and let's talk about the action like it specify what is to be done to the selected message like exchange server applies action to email message that matches the condition and for which no exceptions are present like if exceptions are not present on a uh, for that particular message it will apply the rule on uh, that message so each action affects email message in a different way such as redirecting the email message to another address or uh, dropping the message and exceptions specify message attributes and define message that are not acted upon that means you are uh, putting exceptions on a message so the exception determine like which email message to exclude from an action uh, transport rule exceptions override condition and prevent exchange server from applying a transport rule action to an email message even if even if the message matches all configured transport rule condition and uh, you can uh, configure multiple exceptions on a transport rule to exp expand the criteria for which exchange server should not apply a transport rule and one thing to note here if a uh, if you configure multiple ex exceptions on a same transport rule only one exception must match for the transport rule action to be cancelled and when you specify multiple value on a single exception the exception is satisfied if at least one of the value is met so let's go to our exchange server and see how we can configure the exchange transport rule so right now we are on a server and let's open the exchange server let me maximize it let me check the recipient we have a four recipient like Jack new test Tom I will uh, create a new transport rule and we will try to send email from Jack and let's see what happens to that email in order to configure the transport rule you have to go to the mail flow and you can navigate to the rules and here you can just click on this plus sign and create a new rule now you can name a rule like uh, new test rule and you can select the apply this rule if this is a condition like if the sender is this or the recipient is a particular recipient or if the sender is located in a particular uh, organization unit or the member of so let's select the option here the subject or a body include so here we have to specify the words or phrase like I say confidential so I will add this word and click on OK this is the condition we have applied on this rule and w do the following like this is an action like select an action you want to redirect this message you want to forward this message for the approval or you want to reject this message or you want to delete this message uh, let's select the redirect the message to administrator so this is an administrator I'll click on add and click on OK this is an example and you can set the rule according to your choice and make sure the enforce is uh, selected and if you go to the more option and you can select the date like activate this rule on the following date like this is a time you can just activate this and click on save okay it's uh, saying, saying that the rule activation date is before the current date so I'll click on OK the parameter will be ignored and now the rule has been created for the word like confidential so let's see uh, try to send email uh, from Jack and let's see what happens to that email so right now I am on a Jack inbox this is a Jack mailbox and let's try to open a new mail and I'll send it to itself and let's type confidential infer mission and let me try to send this email let's see if it 
received to Jack or not. Let me refresh. Jack has not received this email yet. So let's see if our administrator has received this email or not. This is an administrator inbox. And you can see uh, the mail has been landed to the inbox of the administrator. This is an administrator mailbox. So this way you can create a transport rule on your exchange server. So this is an example and you can just create like uh, another rule. You can create some other rule like create a new rule if uh, like rule 2 and you can select the uh, condition like uh, if the sender is you have to select the sender like if the sender is Tom and do the following this is a condition like if the sender is Tom if Tom is sending any message then reject that message with explanation and rejection reason is you are not allowed to send emails enforce should be selected and if you want you can just uh, activate this rule and click on save and now the Tom will not be able to send an email guys if you face any problem while configuring your transport rule on your exchange server you can just email me and I hope I will respond on time and if you found this video informative Please do subscribe the channel for more upcoming updated videos and let's meet in the next video.